Hi, welcome to Fertility Factor Fiction. I am your host, Dr. Rahi Victory, a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist. Thank you all again for joining us. So excited to have you guys on for tonight's show. Really important topic. We are going to pick on the guys tonight for once and talk about the effect of paternal age on the outcomes, including live birth, pregnancy rate, and miscarriage. Super important topic because all too often we focus a lot on the women because you're such an important and integral part of this journey, but the guys definitely play a role as well. And the outcomes are very important for the men and where the men's uh, impact and where the men's contribution has a, a significant uh, factor or component in how everything goes. So uh, we got a great article. It's not yet published. So um, you will see journal pre-proof kind of stamped across it, but uh, we got some advanced access. and. Um, it's called Does Advanced Paternal Age Affect Outcomes Following Artificial Reproductive Technologies, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis? So for those of you that are new to the show, um, we typically review a article every week for about 10 or 15 minutes, just bring you the latest and greatest in everything uh, science. And then uh, we take your questions live right after that. So uh, make sure you click that like, subscribe button, and uh, comment if you have any questions or concerns, let us know. And a lot of our uh, viewers like to start asking their questions early, and that's totally fine, but we will get to them um, throughout the show. We don't do it right off the bat. <clears throat> so uh, this article is, uh, as I mentioned, just coming out. Um, it's from a large group. And um, they basically analyzed whether or not um, they had evidence from various other studies that when combined together could provide them with the answer to the question of does paternal age impact your live birth rate? Does it impact the pregnancy rate? And does it impact the miscarriage rate? <clears throat> so uh, it's from a, a group of doctors in the UK um, and uh, they also had some in uh, uh, Italy as well. So uh, quite a large group of physicians all uh, working together on this. And so essentially what they wanted to look at was the fact that there's plenty of data showing that maternal age has a significant negative in uh, uh, effect on the outcomes because of the fact that they will end up having a higher rate of aneuploidy, primarily decreased egg quality, and that that can have a very significant effect, obviously, on the outcomes. But there's actually not that much data on the impact of male age. Now, on our show, if you look back, uh, it was probably a year ago or more, um, we have a video on uh, uh, paternal age and DNA fragmentation but no one's really looked at the overall outcomes in relation to paternal age. We've looked at things like smoking, drinking, drug use, um, all of which are bad. And we've looked at the impact on DNA fragmentation, but we've never had like kind of a more global look at the impact of this on your live birth rate and so on. <clears throat> so what they did was they compiled a whole huge number of studies. And when they analyzed all the different studies that were available, uh, they found about 48, uh, and when they whittled it down to just the ones that met their criteria, which included um, outcome data on all the things they were looking for, they got it down to a total of just 28 articles. And the 28 articles included over 32,000 cycles of IVF that had been done. So they wanted to see, hey, with all of this in mind, what kind of outcomes are we getting? when you break it down into different paternal age categories. And so they really looked at whether it was less than 35, and then there's another study part of it where they looked at 45, and then um, there was a final portion of it where they looked at the age of 50 for your cutoffs. So we do certainly get lots of couples where the male may be older or the woman might be older, but um, essentially the men are in an older age category for reproduction. And so the question here is, how much of a difference is that going to make? Are you going to do just as well if your partner's a young man, uh, you know, less than 35 as you will with someone that's older? And I use that term gingerly because I'm not in the less than 35 category. So um, what did they find? Well, uh, following the 
whittling down to 28 studies and 32,000 patients. Um, I'll share with you what they've got. Uh, we're on screen share now, right? Or at least should be. <clears throat> okay, so I'll try and blow this up for you as much as possible. So when they looked at the pregnancy rate in non-donor cycles, and they were looking at a less than 35 versus greater than 35, um, age range, they found that there was a 31% increase in pregnancy rate if you were less than 35 years of age compared to over 35 years of age. And you can see it kind of mildly highlighted there on your screen. When they looked at the, uh, oh, I gotta bring it down. When they looked at the live birth rate for less than 35 versus over 35, it's a 74% increase in live birth if your partner is less or the sperm source is less than 35. Again, these are non-donor um, sperm cycles or donor egg cycles. So this is very, very momentous information because we certainly have lots of data on women and what happens when they're over 35, but we've never really looked at this this carefully for men. And this is now telling you, you do have a tremendous alteration in your outcomes in especially the big outcome, the, the kind of holy grail, as we say it, which is live birth, if you are looking at something where the, or a situation where your partner is older than 35. And that's really not that old with everybody delaying their fertility in many, many cases, having a male that's over 35 is actually quite common. So this can actually play quite a critical role in your decision-making and your approach and the timeliness of your approach because the longer you wait, obviously, the worse this probably gets. They then looked at the miscarriage rate and when they looked at the miscarriage rate, they found a 38% um, increase in um, the miscarriage rate when the man was older than uh, 35. So this is very, very um, important, but it wasn't significant and it wasn't statistically significant. So they said this part they didn't really feel was a big issue. And so they weren't focusing on it in that particular group. So then they moved the age cutoff to 40 and said, well, what if we shift the cutoff from 35, which is really going to capture a lot of men um, because they're all, you know, a lot of men are going to be over 35. What if we shift the cutoff and say less than 40 over 40? So you can see that down here as well. And here they said the pregnancy rate was 65% higher if you are less than 35, 40, sorry, versus over 40. And for the live birth rate, they showed that it is 110%. So that 2.1 odds ratio you can see there highlighted in yellow, that's 110% increase in live birth if you are less than 40 versus over 40. So a huge, huge difference when you use this 40 year old cutoff. What happened with the miscarriage rate? So now you found a statistically significant decrease in the less than 40 versus over 40. It's a 26% decrease in miscarriage if the male is less than 40 compared to over 40. So again, very, very, very important. They then went and looked at secondary outcomes. And for these, they started splitting it up into a 50-year-old cutoff to see if that made a difference. So when they examined the fertilization rate, so these are the number of eggs that you can turn into embryos, and they used an age cutoff of 50, they did find a significantly greater proportion of um, fertilization if the patients were less than 50 compared to over 50. And it was modest, it's an 11% increase in fertilization. So you'll still probably get good fertilization, with an older guy, but um, it will be a little bit better if the male is younger than 50. When they looked at cleavage rate, which is the number of embryos that are gonna divide, um, that it was quite significant for over 50 versus less than 50. The less than 50 group had a 67% increase in the number of embryos that are going to go on to divide and develop. So again, very, very important, especially for women that think the solution to their problem is donor egg, if your partner is much older, you're still gonna see some compromise in the outcome. And that is very, very important for people to recognize. When they looked at blastocyst formation, so again, this is very important for us. We wanna make sure we're getting to the stage where the embryos are good enough to use. 
they found a 61% increase if you were less than 50 versus over 50. And interestingly, when they looked at top quality embryos, so these would be your 4AA, 5AA, 6AA embryos or ABs, um, they basically did not see a difference regardless of the age um, being less than or over uh, 50. So this data is really, really critical for people to be aware of because of the fact that it really impacts a lot of different groups. It's gonna impact people trying with their autologous um, samples, and we can stop sharing, I guess, now. It's gonna impact people who are trying with um, their uh, donor samples as well. So if you're using your own sperm and your own eggs, then obviously it's gonna have a impact if your partner is older. So even if you're young, uh, but you have an older partner, it's gonna make a difference. If you are using a donor eggs, but you're using them because for example, the woman is older, then if your partner is older or the male sperm source is older, you're also still gonna see a decrease in success and an increase in miscarriage. And that is really valuable information for us to have because this helps me give you better, more honest and more clear advice on what to anticipate when you're going through a cycle because it does mean that the donor egg will not necessarily be a cure and it may necessitate you know, improving the sperm, um, you know, looking at opportunities to get the best sperm possible. Sometimes we use devices. There are multiple modes of selection for sperm. And so some of that may need to be implemented to try and nudge the numbers a little bit more in favor of success. Very helpful for the lab to know, very helpful for us to know, and critically, really important for you to know so that you can make the best decision possible for you. So is it a factor of fiction that male age affects your outcomes? It is a fact, male age affects your outcomes. And because of that, you need to take it into consideration when you're deciding what's right for you. Thank you for joining us for Fertility Factor Fiction. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Watch us on YouTube, all our videos end up there and they're always on Instagram and Facebook for 24 hours after as well. And we are now going to take your questions live. And